What's up, my peoples? Salutations, Israel. I want to give all praise, honor, and esteem to the Most High, whose name is Yahuwah. All right? And Yahuwah alone. All right? He's the true and living God. He's the true and living mighty one. And he is uh, the only one we should be serving, the only one we should be calling upon. All right? Um, the New Testament Messiah is not our Savior. The Most High is our Savior. All right? The, uh, the prophet uh, Muhammad uh, in the Muslim faith is not our Savior or is not our, our prophet. All right? He's not our guide. All right? The Most High left his instructions in his Torah. All right? And we are to... Uh, as we in these last days seek his face and begin to turn back to him we are to uh, align ourselves with what he considers righteousness all right so uh, you see the title of the video today's title uh, is entitled detach uh, let me grab my, my phone here so I'm gonna read y'all some definitions all right Let's see here. Before I read the definitions, uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at an example of somebody important uh, in the scriptures detaching. Uh, turn to Genesis 12, and I'm going to be using my Safari app uh, to knock. All right. I did, I, I, when I was uh, doing the study for this information, uh, I was looking in my Septuagint as well. And uh, the Septuagint and the Tanakh, they, they're, they're different from the KJV. So uh, make sure going forward in your studies that you're not exclusively studying from that KJV. You got to go outside that KJV. You got to go underneath that English. What they what they gave to us is not accurate. It's not right. And they wanted to hide us from ourselves. They wanted to hide us from, from the Most High. All right. They don't want us to turn back to him because when we turn, when the remnant uh, turns back to him, all right, when, when the Most High's remnant, the people who he's going to save at the end and give the earth over to, all right, when they turn back to him, Everything else, all the chaos stops. All right, all this treachery, all this debauchery, all this uh, wickedness is going to be done with. All right, and everybody that's attached to those things is going to be eliminated. All right, that's why we got to begin to detach ourselves from the ways of the world and the, these uh, these different social constructs and this society in particular and begin to piece our lives together, surrounded by the things of Yahuwah, all right? Let's go to Genesis 12, all right? And like I said, I'll be reading from my, my Tanakh app, all right? And this is, uh, this is about Abraham, if you haven't found it yet. All right, so this is what the Most High said to Abraham in Genesis 12. Yahuwah said to Abel, Go forth from your native land and from your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and curse the one who curses you. And all the families of the earth shall bless themselves by you. Abram went forth as Yahuwah had commanded him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. So Abram, Abram left his father's house. All right, and as if you continue to read Abram's story, if you haven't yet, uh, the father would would uh, go ahead and, and uh, fulfill that promise, making a covenant with Abr uh, Abram, changing his name to Abraham, and making him the father of many nations, and uh, thus setting forth uh, the process of creating a people for himself. Started it with Abraham, fulfilled it. All right, uh, in uh, Isaac and Jacob. All right, so that, but Abraham was told to detach from his family and detach from his land. All right, now 
that is something that is hard to do. All right. Uh, I have a bunch of family members. I love them. They love me. Uh, but we're not on the same page. And so I, I can I can just tell. I can, I, I know they can see it, too. They got to be able to see it. How we are slowly just drifting apart. We are slowly just, you know, I still I still go uh, visit people. I still have conversations with people. I still text message people, call people, uh, comment on they, on certain social media things uh, from time to time. But it ain't what it was. When I came into this truth, I started detaching myself from from all these different things. And I mean, I'm still in that process. I'm still because I'm still trying to figure out, you know, when when I left Yahushua, I all the way in 2021, when I when I left him all the way, when I left that character, that New Testament Messiah guy, when I left him and I left that belief system and I left that doctrine, I I could tell that it was going to take me away from a lot of people and a lot of different uh, relationships I had. And yeah, I mean, I, 2021, I, I moved out of my hometown for the first time since college. All right. And I, I, I really wasn't used to, to being away from the most important people in my life. You know, my mom, my sister, my brother, uh, two or three tight friends I had certain co-workers that I'd become uh, used to uh, helping me uh, with certain things. And I, I was used to helping them with certain things. And then, of course, uh, relationships you built with, with people who, who just had physical skills that helped you along the way, whether it was electricians that I was friends with, uh, HVAC guys that I was friends with that would do favors for me. I, I know how to, I got certain skills, jack of, jack of many trades or whatever. I would do stuff for certain people, you know what I'm saying? And even those relationships I have pulled uh, kind of away from. <clears throat> and as people have listened to me uh, over the last several years, develop the new me and how the father is changing me and how the father is, is molding me. They don't like a lot of the message that I that I'm I'm sharing in in today's time. And I notice that they're moving away from me too. All right. But uh it's it's one of those things that uh you when you go back into the old testament, when you go back into the Tanakh and you and you just look at the examples left for us outside of the law, all right, when you go read Isaiah, Ezekiel, Amos, Hosea. Uh, Jeremiah, uh, you you can see uh, when you read uh, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, First and Second Samuel. All right, when you read those those books, among among others, you know, Judges. When you read these stories in these books, it gives you an example of the heart of Yahuwah's men and women. All right, it gives you an example of the the integrity that the people who, who tried to live their life for him, that it gives you an example of who they tried to be. And that's how you, that's how we are able to develop ourselves now in this truth. All right. Leaving that Messiah alone and, and that New Testament Messiah alone, leaving him alone, detaching from all that. All right. Detaching ourselves from false doctrine, detaching ourselves from false people. All right. And and just getting in the word and trying to learn all right, the, the best we can what the father wants from us today in 2022 and 2023 and beyond. All right. He wanted his people to be detached from this worldly. This worldly scheme. All right. Uh, and I, here, I believe that we're in the last days. I believe time is ticking. I, I'm being adamant right now that if you, uh, 
have not prescribed to the most high alone, you need to look into that seriously. All right. There, there is, there's several of us out here that we're doing this to wake up the remnant. We, we know who, who we're sent to. We ain't sent to everybody. All right. The nations is going, most of the nations going to get wiped out. Most, most of the heathens is getting wiped out period. And I say most because I mean, if you go underneath the English, there's provisions set, you know, for strangers that, that are willing to, to serve Yahuwah alone. All right. Uh, also, two thirds of Israel is is not coming. They not going to make it. Two thirds of us is not going to make it. So, uh, just. When you just get out in there and study, there and there's some, there's still some things that you, that I don't understand. There's still some things that I'm I'm uh, trying to connect dots and and pieces of the puzzle and stuff. And this is not an overnight thing. You gonna have to you gonna have to read so the father can show you. So the father can show us. We gotta read and study so the father can show us who we are supposed to be in him. And it, it ain't no middleman that's connecting us to him. It ain't no middleman saving us. The father is salvation. The father is the king. The father is the redeemer. And the word concurs with that. We, in order for us to reestablish our, the autonomy we had in uh, ancestral times past, we're going to have to detach from this system now. I'm, I'm, many, of, uh, many of the people I'm still connected with, we're, we're doing our dangness to uh, become autonomous all right, in our everyday uh, owning of our time, owning of our actions, owning of our day. Owning each day where when we wake up, we control what we do that day. Some some employer does not control what we do that day. Some uh, somebody who uh, we owe is not controlling our day, controlling our time, owning our time, owning basically owning us. All right. And right now, with the economy the way it is and stuff, inflation and, and all the fluctuations and stuff going on. If you ain't got a, a job, a solid job and then a side hustle or two or three, you're probably struggling. And hey, those of us who have a solid job and uh, got all these side hustles, hey, every month, <laughs> every month, you know, any any month can be rough. You know, if you have a motor blow up on your car and you you got some money set aside, you might be good. But if you if you got a mo had a motor blow up on your car and then you also have you know something else that goes wrong that takes a chunk of money and and. You know, you have to uh, be able to maneuver. It, it could put you in a hole, put you in a spot. We got to be able to uh, be able to move freely outside of this system. And the father is telling us to detach. All right. He's calling us out of this evil society. He's calling us out of this confusion. All right. He's calling us out of these different uh, manipulations that we stuck in. All right. He's telling us to realign with him and he got us. And I trust him. I trust that. All right. That's why I'm willing to detach from this stuff. All right. Let me read a few verses that, that, uh, that are, uh, connected with, with being detached. Uh, let's go to Deuteronomy seven and six. All right. We are supposed to be a detached people from this worldly mindset, all right? Deuteronomy 7 and 6, and it reads, for you are a people consecrated to your God, Yahuwah, consecrated to your, your mighty one, Yahuwah. Of all the peoples on earth, your mighty one, Yahuwah, chose you to be his, the mighty one's treasured people, all right? We were chosen to be separate. We were chosen to be different. We were chosen to be detached from this system. All right. 
We need to start making provisions for ourselves to detach. Uh, next, uh, go with me to uh, Exodus 23, 13. Here's another way that we're supposed to be detached. We're supposed to be calling on Yahuwah only. All right. Exodus 23, 13. Some people don't think it's important. Some people think it's okay to, to call on JC. And, and y'all understand after this verse why I sometimes I say JC. I'm trying to get out of the habit of saying Jesus and Yahushua and Yahawashi because those are false names, all right, that represent the position of God, that represent the position of the Almighty, all right? That, that particular character in today's society is supposed to represent the position of the Almighty, and that is not, we can't do that. We can't allow that anymore. It's time to turn away from that, detach from that, all right, break loose from that, and, and turn to the Most High only, all right? Exodus 23, 13, all right? Be on guard concerning all that I have told you. Make no mention of the names of other gods. They shall not be heard on your lips. The Most High is taking this stuff serious. Once you come into the truth, once you've heard the truth, it's time to start making them arrangements and, and time to start making them adjustments. All right, this, this it ain't a game. All right. If you plan on, on being saved, all right, if you plan on the most high considering you, all right, to live in the kingdom forever, and we ain't talking about no many mansions that that New Testament Messiah talking about. My father has uh, many mansions. If it if it was not so, I would have told you. No. All right. Then that many mansion thing is, is a made up story. All right. We talking about the the almighty himself, all right? We didn't, he didn't send a man to come down here. He didn't send a so-called salvistic son down here to come down here, live uh, a perfect life, die, be resurrected for the sins of the world, all right? That ain't in, that ain't in the Tanakh, all right? That, that storyline, that doctrine is not in the Tanakh, all right? He didn't send, send a, uh, a person to represent the bloodline of David to save us. He's the savior. Yahuwah is the savior. All right. And then, then bring him back to, to send him back to heaven to prepare a place for us in heaven. We're not going to heaven. All right. Humanity is going to continue when the father, the, the day of Yahuwah is coming and he going, he going to tear this thing up. And the remnant that's let, that survives that, the people that, that he purifies out of that, is going to be on the earth forever. And they're going, they going to be keeping his law, statutes, and commandments, and judgments. Period. That's what it's going to be. That's what's coming. Go read Zechariah 13 and 14. All right, another verse. Uh, Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah 10. Go to Jeremiah 10. All right. This this is uh, a lot of you guys have have, uh, have uh, connected this with with Christmas, but I'm gonna read this from the Tanakh and let let's let's see let's see what you think if you haven't read it from the Tanakh yet. Jeremiah 10 verses 1 through 16 is what I'm gonna read. Hear the word which Yahuwah has spoken to you, O Israel, O house of Israel. Thus said Yahuwah. Do not learn to go the way of the nations and do not be dismayed by portents in the sky. Let the nations be dismayed by them. For the laws of the nations are delusions. For it is work of a craftsman's hands. He cuts down a tree in a forest with an axe. He adorns it with silver and gold. He fastens it with nails and hammer so that it does not totter. They are like a scarecrow in a cucumber patch. They cannot speak. They have to be carried for they cannot walk, but not afraid of them. Be not afraid of them for they can do no harm, nor is it in them to do any good. See, when the Most High told Israel to go into these different lands, uh, when he was giving them the land, going to, the, to eliminate these different nations, this is what they was doing. All right. They was creating stuff that they could see with their eyes or that they could fathom with their mind. They was creating stuff to worship. All right. 
And he told us, be not afraid of them, for they can do no harm, nor is it in them to do any good. They can't do good or bad to you. They can't, they don't control nothing. They idols. They graven images. All right, then he said in verse six, O Yahuwah, there is none like you. This salvistic son that they say is like him, this is another verse that goes against that. This is in the Tanakh. There is none like you. You are great and your name is in great is great in power. Who would not revere you, O king of the nations? For that is your due. Since among all the wise of the nations and among all their royalty, there is none like you. But they are both dull and foolish. Their doctrine is but delusion. It is a piece of wood. When you walk in the church, that's what you're dealing with. Silver beaten flat that is brought from Tarshish and gold from Euphrates, the work of a craftsman and the goldsmith's hands. Their clothing is blue and purple. All of them are the work of skilled men. But Yahuwah is truly God. He is a living God, a living mighty one, the everlasting king. He's, Yahuwah is called the king here. An everlasting king. How, why would he be the everlasting king and then give it over to a salvistic son to become the new everlasting king? It makes no sense and it don't fit. Detach from that. All right. Detach from that. At his wrath, the earth quakes and nations cannot endure his rage. And that's what's coming. All right. The nation is going to get punished because they over punished us. All right. Go read Zechariah chapter one. The nations overpunished Israel. And so that's why the Most High going to wipe most of them out. Thus you shall say to them, let the gods who do, did not make heaven and earth perish from the earth and from under these heavens. This is what we're supposed to be saying to people. This is why we say it ain't no salvistic son. Because we're supposed to get rid of all these other so-called gods. Yahuwah is the only mighty one. He's the true and living Elohim. He made the earth by his might, established the world by his wisdom. No salvistic son did that. This is, this is going against that. Detach from that New Testament. Detach from this worldly system of, of being obedient to your oppressors. Detach from that. Be your own person. Get, build your own survival system. We, we supposed to be leaving this stuff to allow the most high to develop us around this stuff or outside of this stuff or over on top of this stuff. However, he decides to do it. We just got to put ourselves in position to detach and then finally detach when we can. All right, we should be working toward it. Like I said, it ain't going to happen overnight. But you can work your way into that and he's going to go in front of you and protect your rear guard as you do this. If you put him only. All right. If you serve him only. All right. Thus you should say to them, let the gods who did not make heaven and earth perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He made the earth by his might, established the world by his wisdom and by his understanding, stretched out the skies. When he makes his voice heard, there is a rumbling of water in the skies. He makes vapors rise from the end of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain and brings forth wind from his treasuries. 14. Every man is proved dull without knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame because of the idol. For his molten image is a deceit. These images out here is the deceit. These idols out here is a deceit. All right? The, the salvistic son is a deceit. There is no breath in them. They are a delusion, a work of mockery. Can you, how many times do he got to tell us? Every man is proved though without knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame because of the idol for his molten image is a deceit. There is no breath in them. They are delusion, a work of mockery. In their hour of doom, they shall perish. They are mocking the most high. He just called it out. They it is a work of mockery. And in verse 16, not like these is the portion of Jacob, for it is he who formed all things. The Most High formed all things, and Israel is his very own tribe. Yahuwah of hosts is his name. The Most High 
formed Israel and Jacob to be his very own tribe. And that's why we got to detach from all this other stuff. The most high is not in that foolishness. He is holy. He is set apart. And we supposed to be too. All right? We are his witnesses. And then the last one I want to go to uh, is Isaiah 52. Everybody know about Isaiah, uh, about Isaiah 53. But how many people have, have, have read Isaiah 52? All right. Let's see here. What am I looking for? All right, let's start at, we're going to start at four. All right, it said, nope, nope, let me just start at one. All right, it says, awake, awake, O Zion, clothe yourself in splendor, put on your robes of majesty, Jerusalem, holy city, for the uncircumcised and the unclean shall never enter you again. Arise, shake off the dust, Sit on your throne, Jerusalem. Loose the bonds from your neck, O captive one, O captive one, fair Zion. It, he's telling us to detach ourselves, free ourselves from these chains that, that these mental chains. Now, every a lot of people say in today's time, oh, it's just as bad as it was back then. No, it ain't. We got a lot more freedom to maneuver now. If people learn how to shut their mouth and move in silence and move behind the scenes, they can escape a lot of this stuff that be befalling people. All right. Kanye hit like, like, yay, Kanye West, the artist formerly known as Kanye West. Yay has been moving behind the scenes for the last few years, freeing himself of these bonds. And, and, and now that it, it's, it's a, uh, that Kyrie has, has created the fuss that he's created Eventually, Kyrie's going to have to do the same thing. He's going to have to free him. He's going to have to move behind the scenes to free himself. But he already got out of one contract. Kyrie did. He got out of that Nike contract. And now he's got the opportunity to move in a way that will set up the future until the most high resets this thing. He's telling us to make moves. He's telling us to detach from this system. A lot of people don't know how. This is where your prayer and your study comes in. So the most I can guide you. He'll send some of us to pour into you, but he's going to guide you. For thus said Yahuwah, you were sold for no price and shall be redeemed without money. All right, as we make these moves, these behind the scenes moves to, to detach from this system and detach from from the way this, this world has, has brainwashed us and manipulated us, the Most High is going to intervene on our behalf at all the different turns that we need him to. For thus said the Master, master Yahuwah, of old my people went down to Egypt to sojourn, sojourn there, but Assyria has robbed them, given nothing in return. What therefore do I gain here, declares Yahuwah, for my people has been carried off for nothing. Their mockers howl, declares Yahuwah, and constantly, unceasingly, my name is reviled. Be the Most High is going to save us, going to save the remnant, all right, because he wants his name to be held in its high, the highest esteem that it's supposed to. All right? And right now it can't be because his people are being trampled on. His heritage is being trampled on. It was part of our punishment, but they went too far. They, they overpunished us. And they, they've manipulated the system thinking that they can get away with it. The most I ain't gonna let them get away with it. All right, let's let's move down. All right. All right, number 11. Turn, turn away. Touch not unclean as you depart from there. As we detach, align ourselves with his words, with his instructions, with his rules, with his commandments, with his laws with his judgments, with his statutes, to the best of our ability. We have to start aligning ourselves. Now, I'm, I'm not the one that's supposed to tell you exactly what you're supposed to be doing, what you ain't supposed to be doing. I'm, I ain't that one. I'm here to share the message of the Most High and give you, give you this information that he's already put there. He said he's going to write his, his words on our mind, on our heart, that no man will have to tell the other about you. He going to do that. 
All right. What we supposed to do is learn what righteousness is, learn what he considers righteous and right and just and try our best to do those things as we detach from this system. Keep pure as you go forth from there, you who bear the vessels of Yahuwah. Do your best to stay clean. Do your best to follow his instructions. Go study Ezekiel and that, that will let you, that will help Ezekiel, knowing Ezekiel, you know, and knowing, knowing uh, what's in Leviticus and Deuteronomy all right, and, and all the law and then going and seeing what Ezekiel said and then go study uh, the the other prophets and then study the ancestors, study the, the 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 our descendants, study how Moses handled things, study how Solomon handled things before his fall, study how David handled things, study how how uh, Yahushua son of Nun handled things when he was given that that leadership role. Indeed, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You hook for uh, for you will not depart in haste. Nor will you leave in flight, for Yahuwah is marching before you. The mighty one of Israel is your rear guard. And I just told y'all that. That's what I was talking about right there. And then verse 13. Indeed, my servant shall prosper, be exalted, and raised to great heights. The most We are the most high servant. Israel is his son and his servant. And we, he's going to, to lift us up and redeem us eventually. All right? If we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. And then I wrote this note real quick, and then we're going to get out of here. The reasons why we should be working to break free from this system and detach from this, the way the society is set up now. All right. I wrote three things down. One, so we can follow Yahuwah's, rule, Yahuwah's rules unwavering, uninterrupted, and unedited. Eventually, he will sit each one of us where we're supposed to be. In, in his righteousness. Number two reason uh, why we should be working to break free from this system. Because this system is going down. The way it's set up now, how it manipulates people and makes the rich richer and the poor poor, and, and how it, it starves people, all right? This system is going down. So if you detach from this system and you no longer need this system, when it goes down, you, when you sitting there outside the outside of bounds, while everybody else is in there still fumbling around, you ain't got to worry about nothing. You done already detached, and you doing your thing over here. And the people that's supposed to be with you will be with you, and the ones that that ain't with you, you got to detach your mind from them. Me and my wife have conversations about detaching our our uh, our minds and our emotions from certain people in our lives. We got to do it. Because we got to prepare either for uh, society's crack, when society cracks and crumbles, or when our, those particular individuals in our lives who are not living for Yahuwah, when they crack and crumble. We got to prepare ourselves for that. And you should be doing the same thing. And then the last thing, the last reason why we should be trying to break free from the system and detach from the system, because the end is near. All right. Wickedness, sin, evil, uh, like I said, debauchery, all these things rule this world. All those things are, are good has been made evil and evil has been made good. If you tell the truth, they censor in your butt and they, they mess around, kick you off social media for telling the truth. All right. They'll call you all kind of all kind of different things, especially anti-Semite. They man, that, that's crazy. All right. But but here's the thing. Ain't no salvistic sun cracking that sky and coming back to save nobody. And ain't no new Jerusalem coming to sit down on the earth. That ain't happening. The father is going to do his thing on the day of Yahuwah. That thing is going to happen. Destruction is going to happen. It, it said uh, eyeballs is going to melt in their socket. Tongues is going to melt in their mouth. People going, we, it says the righteous are going to tread over all our enemies because our enemies are going to be the dust of the earth. They're going to become the dust of the earth. At the end of the day, either you progressing or you regressing. Either you elevating and leveling up or you just, you detach from the most high. 
and you not, everything you think you're doing don't even matter. And we're going to go out with this, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. I've been reading this a lot because I want to get it through y'all head. All right? I want, I want to get this out there. I don't want to just get it through y'all head. I want to get it out there. Uh, the, the Tanakh says it different than the KJV. All right? 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. See, the Tanakh said it makes it uh, conditionary. All right, the, uh, I mean, uh, the KJV makes it conditional. All right, if the KJV says if, but the Tanakh makes it a historical event that's going to happen. All right, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. When my people, it don't say if my people in the Tanakh. It says when my people in the Tanakh. When my people who bear my name humble themselves. Pray and seek my favor and turn from their evil ways. That's what we're supposed to be doing right there. That's how you detach. That's how you detach from the system. We, we humble ourselves. When we pray to him, we pray to Yah. We seek Yah's favor. And we turn from our evil ways. And we, we only know what evil is when we go back to the law. He told us what evil was in the law and in the prophets and in the Psalms. That's how we know what evil is. All right. I will hear in my heavenly abode and forgive their sins and heal their land. This is it right here. This is how we detach. This right here is how we detach. And this is not anywhere in chapter and verse, but this is how my brain is working on this. And I'm going to just put it out there. This is not something that I'm, I'm telling people to do, but I'm just putting it out there so people can, can have, you know, you can have conversations about it, all right? And you can uh, just have it on your thought process and think about it and, and, and meditate on it, marinate on it, study it, and see, see if, it come, if, it, if it bodes well for you. All right, get in them Ten Commandments, learn all the laws that that uh, pertain to you. Every law don't pertain, the whole 16, 613 don't pertain to everybody. There are laws for children, there are laws for women, there are laws for pregnant women, there are laws for uh, uh, priests, there are laws for strangers. Everything don't pertain to, to everybody, all right? Learn those. And, and keep what you can keep until you can further progress. Each year, you should be able to progress. Every six months, every year, something like that. That's not, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that that is how we do it in, in scriptural. I'm saying that's how I'm looking at it until the father brings me further along. And he brought me to that point. He's brought me to this point. Another thing, the abominations. Look at the abominations. Don't do that stuff. All right. See if anything that he said, woe to see if that fits you. If he said, woe to something and it fits you, stop doing it. The things that he hates, look at, learn the things that he hates and don't do that stuff. All right. So this is how we detach though. And this is how we improve uh, our chances of Yahuwah saving us. So uh, that's it. That's that's uh, this message, y'all. I didn't mean for it to be this long, but uh, Yahuwah's will be done, right? Uh, just want to give a shout out to everybody. Stay studied up. Go look for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Don't take no teacher's word for it. Eat the meat, spit out the bones, all right? But be looking for yourself for sure and be praying. And do what Chronicles, uh, 2 Chronicles 7 says right there in 14. Do what that says. That's the most highest word right there. Do what that says. All right. And he will condition you and, and mold you and shape you into who he wants you to be going forward. All right. Stay humble. Always be willing to listen to somebody, but don't, don't, don't accept everything that you hear is truth. Seek these things and search these things out for yourself. Much love y'all. And remember, 
I ain't got all the answers, but I'll share what I learned. Well, I'll share what I learned. <laughs> shalom, shalom.